All right, George Wythe is at Radford tonight. Imagine if I get a copyright strike from a local news station. Here come the Bobcats. George Wythe strikes first. Luke Jolly with a bomb to Layden Houston. Early 6 nice nothing lead for okay. George Wythe, right? All right, and here, how nice is it to have fans back? That's I awesome. I know, and the students are fired up. So good. All right, Tyrell Dobson oh, rips the ball them. out. And it's Radford ball. That's some nice defense. Now yeah. it's time to cash it in. Marcel Baylor calls his own number with some fancy footwork here. One juke finds the pylon. More Radford on the kickoff return. Kamar Potter. Wait for it. It's this good. Takes it in. Little spin move. Stop and go. Oh nice gosh. return. Look leads, at that move. Leads to a Bobcat touchdown. Radford not missing a beat. They beat George with. It feels like the Three Rivers always produces a Class 2 contender. Tonight, couple had challenges from Class 1 programs. We know about Glenver. We know about Radford. Both of them actually had to play good games tonight. Yeah, and, you know, in our camp tour, Glenver said that they had low numbers, but it certainly didn't seem to hinder the talent. Okay. Tonight, they take the field for home opener against the Maroon Tide. Galax's quarterback, Ian Ashworth, keeps the ball, goes up the middle, and then makes a good cut and sprints in for the 32-yard touchdown at 7 Nothing. Glenver is going to get on the board early in the second quarter. Quarterback Aiden Walk drops back and fires this pass to Jackson Swanson, wow. who takes it in for the 70 yard touchdown. Both teams tied 7 to 7. The Maroon Tide going for it on fourth down. Quarterback Ian Ashworth takes a few steps Ooh. back, but is taken down by Nicholas Woodson. The Highlanders get the ball back. That would set them up for this touchdown. Walk looks and passes the ball, but it's tipped. But lucky for him, Dagan Williams was Johnny on the spot and takes it in for the 30-yard touchdown. Glenver beats Galax 28-14. to All right, James River hosting Buffalo Gap tonight. Here we go from Buchanan, second quarter. Buffalo Gap up 14-7. James River, Zeal Hammonds, 20-yard completion to Ben Bailey to get into Gap territory. End of the first half, Buffalo Gap trying to get a quick score. Curtis Lowe deep to Luke Tinsley, wrestling the ball away from the DB right there. Spectacular catch. 14-7-0, the halftime score. Third quarter, 57-yard video game-like touchdown run by Bryce Hildebrand. Look at him book the move and groove. And I don't see him hitting anybody, so he's not. A, well, he could be the rolling ball of Butcher Knives, but he's not. He's not. He's the... <laughs> He's officially the uh, video game right. run of the week. 30-7, right. to seven, <laughs> Buffalo Gap is victorious. Fighting Blues taking the field, and here we go. Perry McClure's Brennan Shiley taking a shot, but finds Dylan Kreitzer over the middle uh, to pick up a third down conversion. Later in the drive, this is Austin Higgins. Blindside sack, forced fumble, Peyton Matz, recovery, keeping the game scoreless. Late first, Shiley finds John Snyder, who picks up a third and 11, getting the Blues inside the five. That would set up Snyder for a short yard. It's touchdown. The halftime score was 6-0, but Rockbridge rallied for a 14-6. Tonight they open at Auburn, and they were in control throughout that game. Auburn students showing up. Auburn trying to get something going. Landon Mars to Brady Hale. Nice play right here. A little bit later on, Mars doing it again, this time to Isaiah Keith. Nice play, Auburn in business, but Narrows bringing the defense like they always do. Watch Mars passing, and how about Max McLaughlin with the interception for Narrows. Narrows pitches yet another shutout, 26 to nothing. Sam Dragovich here going deep to Braxton Dunnings. So alone he could use a dating service. That is ridiculous. Great play and a touchdown. Hidden Valley, though, uh, loses the football right here. Cave Springs, some nice defense. Tyler Poff is on it for the recovery. And Coach Leftwich could only watch. Cave Spring getting it ready. Landon Altizer here. Long run for the touchdown. Misdirection right here to cash that thing in. But the same combination again. Dragovich to Dunnings again. And there he is all alone again. 14-6 the score. It ended up 14-12. If Salem is looking for a program that has its tradition, then look no further than Martinsburg, West Virginia. Eight 3A state titles since 2010. They welcome them in tonight. So let's strike up the band and get ready. Martinsburg's running back is Xavion Kendall. 
He's taken it five yards to the corner on the quick pitch, and he is in some nice blocking right there. It's 7-0. Salem's Cam left, which is going to answer. Watch right here as this is Salem football. Hat on a hat, and there's some room. Off tackle, 43 yards to the three-yard line. Left, which would add the touchdown to make it 7-7 as he powers in right here. But the Bulldogs, Murphy Clement, a three yard run right here. And just offensive effort, their offensive line getting it done. 14-7 Bulldogs lead. Salem was knocking at the door and couldn't punch it in. That might've changed the momentum of this game. Martinsburg 35, Salem 21 tonight. Heritage, 3C usual suspect, William Fleming, Class 5 state semifinalist. Brooke, which team was able to carry all that momentum from the spring into tonight's collision? I mean, if we're looking at talent return from last year, both teams. Right. I mean, that's why we picked it for a breakdown. <laughs> that's right. This is an insane game, and tonight it was truly the battle of the twos, all right? For Fleming, we know him. Former first and 10 player of the week, Deshaun Lewis. Here he is breaking up a huge play by Heritage, getting the ball back for the Colonels early in the game. Then later, he's going to send a bomb downfield to Micah Jones. No surprise that Lewis still has gas in his tank. All right, and number two for Heritage coming up is Zach Steele. Appy, I may have finally found a player faster than you. That's not hard to do. Well, but okay. I was going to say, that's saying something. Former cross-country runner over here. This kid has jets. He's scrambling for a first down. Actually, let's rewind that. He is hurtling for a first down. Very nice. Athletic. And again, grabbing a touchdown to put Heritage up by 13. Both teams with impressive offensive output, but the Heritage secondary adds to the star of approval. Pioneers get the win on the road, 33-18. to 18. It was about a battle of attrition. Um, it's hot. You know, and I think both teams not having a scrimmage, you're one, you're one scrimmage down in terms of conditioning. Um, you know, I think in the second half, it's about who wants it more. Um, and we just made a little bit, you know, we just made a couple more plays, but it's not pretty, but your first game's never going to be pretty. And both teams didn't have the one scrimmage. So, you know, it's a different year. You got to adapt and overcome. Uh, we're happy to come out with the W. And, uh, you know, it's a very good football team. And I give credit to Coach Lovelace and, and, and William Fleming. All right, and the test continues for Heritage. They face Dinwiddie next Friday. Liberty's rushing attack looking dangerous and polished. Tanner Stanley pulls the dive, fakes the pitch, rambles inside the five to set up a touchdown. It was 6 nothing. More Minutemen. It's Stanley. Little counter action. The senior knows what to do with it. The need for speed. And he is off the pylon and in for another touchdown. But Bird has an answer. Sophomore Israel Hairston, direct snap. He's hunting the goal line, and he's finding it right there. But the night belongs to Liberty. Jordan Steele had a nice game, including an interception. Liberty 33 to 28. First, the Vikings of Northside taking on a rejuvenated Pulaski team under coach Mark Dixon. Keep in mind that Scott Fisher would get it done as well tonight. Drawn first blood, Nathaniel Funk off the corner. Special teams play blocking the rock. That's going to set him up in the red zone. First and goal Vikings, Cameron Abshire diving in. North side up early seven to nothing. But Mark Dixon's gang's going to strike back. It would take a little while for them to get warming to the task, but Cam Cooper hits senior. J.J. Gully on the slant, and J.J. now the second most famous J.J. ever in the city of Roanoke. With the touchdown right there, we know who the other guy was. He played basketball. 7-7. The Vikings led 10-7, but Pulaski's defense stood strong, and they roared back 20-17. to The Cougars with a big win in Roanoke. Lord Botetot, state runner-ups in Class 3 at EC Glass. Hilltoppers up and looking for more. George White to Eli Wood. It's 21-0. Hilltoppers. Time winding down first quarter. Third and 10. It's White to Wood again. 35-yard haul in right there to set up first and goal. Second quarter. Fourth and 28 for EC Glass. White to Markavius Graves along the sideline. Hilltoppers were up 28 to nothing. This game was 41-7, but Lord Botetot roared back to make it interesting. 41-30, Glass was victorious in a battle of two teams that, frankly, we expect to see come playoff time.
Two more big-time matchups in the Lynchburg area tonight, including state semifinalist LCA hosting another proud program in Magna Vista. These two don't get together very often. We are on the campus of Liberty University. LCA, the ball. This is Davis Lane connecting with Jalen Belford. That's about a 60-yard throw and catch. That's going to set up the running back, Caleb Davidson, and he powers in. Bulldogs go up 6-0. Now the Warriors fumbled on the kickoff return, recovered by the Bulldogs minutes later second and goal Belford would find another hole for a touchdown here he comes now kicker missed both extra points so we're up 12 nothing but later in the first quarter Lane going to Caleb Sears and say it wouldn't want to be anytime soon he is gone this one all LCA how about 60 to 14 over Magna Vista both Brookville and Patrick Henry are two high-caliber teams that have no shortage of talent, which means the difference tonight would come down to limiting mistakes and executing at a very high level. Certainly a great sight to see fans out here at the Beehive yet again. The Bees paying tribute to fallen coach Scott Hunt on their first drive of the game by establishing the run game early and often. That's until PH defense got in on the action, coming up with the fourth down stop on that drive. However, Brookville's defense returning the favor. Tayshawn Butler serving up all sorts of plays tonight, gets the interception. He would turn that into a touchdown on the ensuing drive for the 7-0 lead. Then they go to the air. The return of the Mac, Drake McDaniel to Ethan Roby, 28 yards on a dime. 14-0 lead for the Bees. PH offense a little flat tonight while the Bees kept on a buzzing. Silas Rucker getting in on the action. Touchdown run right up the gut. They weren't done right there. Floating like a butterfly, stinging like the Bees they are. Butler, this time a 57-yard touchdown catch. Shake, rattle, and roll as he gets to the end zone. 28-0 lead at half. Half time, PH would get on the board late, but the Bees take this one 35 to 15. You know what, WSLS 10? If you're watching this video, get out! If you copyright strike or content ID this video, be prepared for to get sued for everything that you have, which isn't much because you are a local station after all.